I am terrible with TBRs. I am much too much of a mood reader. I pick up what I feel like reading and I read it. I can't make a list and stick to it. It just doesn't work. But I like a challenge and I have a lot of books that I really want to get to this year. So I've made myself a priority TBR for 2023, which is pretty much just 23 books I want to make sure I read this year. So I thought I would tell you all about all 23 of them. I'm not going to spend too long on any of them because we would be here all day. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> so I will try and fly through them. Uh, some of them are new releases that I'm very excited for and some of them are books I have on my shelves or have been meaning to get to for a couple of years. So it's mixed. Also, if you can hear my cat eating throughout this, which you probably can't because my microphone is terrible, but if you can, I'm very sorry. <laughs> the first one is, what's it called? The first one is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune, who is an autobi author for me. I love his books, especially Under the Whispering Door. It's a very special book to me. His stuff is just so whimsical and lovely and moving and I just, oh, it just feels like a little portable home. Each book, I love them. So I'm very excited for this one. It follows a little family made up of a human and I think three robots and they live, wait for it, in a strange little home built into the branches of a grove of trees. Like, that's the dream, you know? Not the robots, but the trees. So I believe that someone from their past makes a reappearance and they have to go and save one of their own and I'm sure it's going to be lovely. His stuff is always lovely. Next up is, okay, I know I said that these were in no particular order, but this is the one I'm most excited for, if I'm being honest with you. It's called The Undetectables, and it's by Courtney Smith, who happens to be a wonderful, wonderful friend of mine. I adore them. I think they are just the best person, the coolest person, the most talented person, so I cannot wait to read their first book. Um, this is set in an occult town. It follows a supernatural detective, a detective agency uh, made up of, I think, three witches and a ghost in a cat costume, I think? That sounds about right. <laughs> they are hunting down a um, magical serial killer and it has chronic illness rep, it has queer rep, it's just it's gonna be such a good time and I cannot wait. Next up is Page Boy by Elliot Page. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with Elliot Page. I always have been. I just think he's the coolest person and um, I can't wait to find out more about him and his life and his insights. I'm sure it's gonna be profound. It's probably gonna be quite beautiful. And um, yeah, I can't keep saying I'm very excited, but I am very excited. The next one is The Sinister Booksellers of Bath, which is a sequel to The Left-Handed Booksellers of London. Yeah. So The Left-Handed Booksellers of London was one of my favourite books the year I read it. I'm not usually much of a fantasy person, but I live in a Garth Nix household. My girlfriend is obsessed with him, as we probably all should be. He's very wonderful. Um, so <laughs> So The Left-Handed Booksellers of London follows magical booksellers, magical fighting booksellers. Um, <laughs> set, it's set in the 80s. It's just a good time. It is very charming. It's very funny. It's just a lot of fun and we read it together and we had the best time reading it together. So I'm sure we're going to do the same with the sequel and I cannot wait for it. Next is Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson was one of my favourite books of last year. I was completely infatuated with it. It's the kind of writing that just takes your breath away. It makes you want to charge forward and keep reading and just get it straight into your brain, but it also makes you want to slow down and really appreciate it. I found myself rereading passages because it was too good to just read once, you know? So anything that he brings out, I am going to pick up and I am going to read. So the synopsis says, Set in London and Ghana across three summers, Small Worlds is an intimate and powerful exploration of a son-father relationship, music, and searching for meaning. And that sounds lovely. Then we have Dear Friend, From My Life, I Write to You and Yours. This is one that I already have, and I'm actually about a third of the way into it. So if you watched my last video, you know <laughs> I'm a little obsessed with the Book of Goose. I have kind of fallen in love with Yeon Lee. So I had to read more of her work and I started with this one. It is basically just a collection of her thoughts from a time when she was deeply depressed and it's her ruminating on time and being and um, the self and it is so interesting and her insights are just like mind altering. <laughs> like I'm highlighting every line and just going oh okay 
I think differently now. <laughs> it's fantastic. The writing is beautiful. So beautiful. Hello, Bucky. So yeah, I'm loving that one, and that's exciting that one of these will be ticked off the list soon. Next up is Lyriel by Garth Nix, a little bit more Garth Nix. This is my girlfriend's favourite book ever, and I haven't read it. Almost 12 years into our relationship. And this is the year I'm finally going to do it. I have read Sabriel, which is the first book in the series, but I haven't read Lyriel yet, which is the second book in the series. And I think it is about time. <laughs> I just feel quite intimidated by these books. They're fantasy, which I'm quite bad with. Um, but they're so well written and the characters are so lovable and the first one had a talking cat so I, I have no excuse. Next is Frontier by Grace Curtis. This is a sci-fi. I love sci-fi. I haven't actually read a lot of it very recently and I'm excited to get back to it um, and I think this is going to be a really really good one. The blurb says that it's perfect for lovers of Becky Chambers and Mary Robinette Cowell and I happen to love both of them so perfect. And it says that it is a heartfelt queer romance in a high noon standoff with Earth's uncertain future full of love, loss, and laser guns. So yes, I will be reading that. <laughs> then we have The Disenchantment by Celia Bell. This is queer historical fiction, which I think I like. I don't read a lot of historical fiction. It tends to make me feel a little overwhelmed. <laughs> but this one just sounds so good. So I'm just going to read you the synopsis because I don't know how to explain it. Everyone connected to the court of Louis the 14th, <laughs> I think that's 14, has something to hide. For the Baroness Marie Catherine, it's the pleasure she seeks outside of her unhappy marriage. At the centre of her illicit freedom is her lover, Victoire Rose de Bourbon, 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 mm -hmm. Mademoiselle de Conti, the androgynous, self-assured countess. When Victoire's devotion results in an act of murder to save Marie Catherine, the pair must escape from the clutches of Paris's overzealous chief of police as they attempt to outwit him, they are led to the darkest corners of Paris and Versailles, discovering lies, mysticism, and people with secrets they too will kill to keep. Fast-paced, opulent, and hypnotically absorbing, Celia Bell's debut is a love story to die for. Like, that sounds great. Lucky, are you having fun? My cats have, um, they've had some catnip. <laughs> I won't lie to you. <laughs> the timing of filming this is really not very good. Next up is YN by Esther E, and this sounds right up my street, um, to the point where I'm almost a little bit nervous for it. So this one is a novel about a Korean-American woman living in Berlin whose obsession with a K-pop idol sends her to Seoul on a journey of literary self-destruction. I believe she writes YN, like your name, fanfiction about this K-pop idol, <laughs> and there's something about the mix of your name, fan fiction, and literary fiction that just really intrigues me. I really want to read that. Um, I also am obsessed with many a K-pop idol, so I think it's perfect for me. Then we have End Papers by Jennifer Sovereign Kelly. This sounds so good. So it's set in 2003 New York. Um, it's about a genderqueer book conservator who feels trapped by her gender presentation, her ill-fitting relationship, and her artistic block as she discovers a decades-old hidden queer love letter and becomes obsessed with tracking down its author. Like, how good does that sound? That just ticks so many boxes. It's queer, it's genderqueer in particular, it's um, about an art conservator, she has arts block, like... Ooh, I love that. Books about artists, books about um, people struggling with their art. <laughs> I relate to that. <laughs> so yeah, I think that'll be a good one. Then we have All Down Darkness Wide, which I have already. This is by Sean Hewitt. I have never read his poetry, but I really, really want to. Um, but I think I might start with this. I have been putting this off because I think it's going to break my heart. Um, and I'm not... Uh, I'm not against having my heart broken by a book, but you need to be in the right space for it, and I think that time is coming. <laughs> so this is a memoir about his time in a relationship with a man who had pretty severe depression, and it, there's a line I liked, it says that he delves deep into his own history enlisting the ghosts of queer figures and poets before him, which just sounds beautiful to me. I think that it's going to be devastating and lovely, and I'm nervous. But I'm gonna read it. Also, the cover. It's beautiful. Then we have Exciting Times. 
which I also have and have had since I think the day it was released, but I haven't read it yet. So you all probably know this one. Um, I'm pretty interested in Nisha Dolan's new book and I feel like I should probably read the one I have before I pick that up. That just makes sense to me. So yeah, it's queer and it's Irish and that's enough for me. So I'm going to read this this year. Then we have The Cloisters. So this is Dark Academia with Tarot. <laughs> I can't wait. So it follows a woman who works with a mysterious group of arts researchers and then she finds this mysterious long lost 15th century I think tarot deck and it all takes off from there and it just sounds wonderful. The cover is incredible. I've pre-ordered the Waterstones edition. Oh my god I hope I love this book because I think it's going to be one of the most beautiful books I own and I'll be heartbroken if I don't like it. <laughs> then we have The Left Hand of Darkness which I forgot to take off my shelf but I do have it. I just think that I love Ursula K. Le Guin, but I have never read Ursula K. Le Guin. I just, every single quote I've ever seen by her has blown my mind. And I just think that she's going to be a favorite to the point where I keep not reading her because I don't want to be wrong and because I'm also so sure. Um, it makes no sense, but it's the way my brain works. I just think I'm gonna love her. And this book is about two people on a long, arduous journey who discover the meaning of friendship and love, and I, as far as I know, it deals with gender in a really, really interesting way, and I want to read that, so, yeah. It's another one I'm nervous for, but I think it could be a favorite book. Then we have The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. I think that I'm ready for my Joan Didion era, so, <laughs> yeah, that's it pretty much. And then Orlando, which is here, by Virginia Woolf. I also think I'm ready for my Virginia Woolf era, so I'll be reading this. The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. Uh, this was up for the Women's Prize last year, and I wanted Sorrow and Bliss to win. I love Sorrow and Bliss, and I was so obsessed with Sorrow and Bliss that I didn't even bother reading any of the others because I was like, this is the best book, this can't be beaten. And uh, that was silly of me, and now I want to read more <laughs> of those books. So I have a few. I have. The Ruth Ozeki one, The Book of Form and Emptiness, I think. I have Great Circle, and The Sentence is the one that I want to prioritize. It is about, I believe, an indigenous woman who owns a bookshop that is haunted by like her worst customer. And it's set over a year, and I think it, um, I think that year encapsulates a lot of important moments in recent history. So I'm very interested to read it. I think it will be good. Um, I just have a feeling about it and I love books about bookshops so then another one that I have but forgot to bring in here with me is Saha 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 by um, Cho Namju I love Kim Ji-young born 1982 it's one of my favorite books again it was another, another favorite of last year this is her new book it's a dystopia about a privatized country named town um, that is controlled by a mysterious organization and uh, that just sounds really interesting to me, but it doesn't matter what it's about. I was going to read whatever she came out with next. Next we have Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. This one just sounds really fun to me. It is about jealousy and obsession and true crime and booksellers. And yeah, I think it'll just be a fun one. So sounds very intriguing to me. Next is In These Hallowed Halls. Right. <laughs> this is an anthology of dark academia stories. That's great. I love Dark Academia, but the reason that this is on this list is because M. L. Rio, who wrote If We Were Villains, has a story in it, and this is the first thing she's releasing since If We Were Villains. If We Were Villains is my favourite book ever. Fun fact. Completely in love with that book. Um, so no matter what else is in this book or who else has written stories for it, this is going to be one of my most anticipated books of the year because it has an ML Rio story. Then we have On the Savage Side. So this is by Tiffany McDaniel who wrote Betty. I haven't read Betty because I think it'll break me. I just think it'll take my heart and stomp all over it. And I haven't been in the right place for that yet. So I haven't read it. But this one sounds really good to me. So I think I'm going to start with this one. Hello, Ruro. On the Savage Side is about two sisters growing up in, I think, Ohio, while there is a serial killer killing women in their area. I've heard such wonderful things about Tiffany McDaniel, and I've never read her, and I really want to, so I think that this one will be the first one that I go with. And then the last one is another one that I have, and that is 
Thin Places by Carrie Doherty. Um, this is half nature writing and half memoir about growing up in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. I haven't read a lot about that, to be honest, and I think I should, so I'm going to. And also I love nature writing. I love nature. I love writing. I love them together. Um, I just think I'm going to love this book. So it's been on my shelves for a few months now and I haven't gotten to it. I probably should. And they are the 23 books. I hope this wasn't too long, um, Bucky. <laughs> they are the 23 books that I want to prioritize this year and make sure that I get to. I'm sorry, my cat is, she's gone wild. Not you though, you're too perfect. So hopefully I will get to all of these books and hopefully I will love all of these books. Um, hopefully they will live up to the very high expectations I have for them. But I am um, just so looking forward to this year. It, uh, it makes me really happy to know that I have a list of 23 books that I'm so excited for. Um, like how lucky am I? That's a beautiful thing. So yes, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to make another video very soon. It's going to be a book haul and I'm really excited. I have a stack of boxes that I want to open so badly <laughs> that I'm trying to control myself. So yeah, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Would you care to apologize for making noise the whole time? No? No. You're perfect. You're an angel. Keep it up.